I was very interested and intrigued, in fact, when, when Victoria um, suggested that we do this little series on studies. Um, so I've had a good look through my personal collection of studies, um, some of which are, are here with me, um, plus some others. And anyway, I thought in this first little bit, uh, I just talk about studies in general. Uh, and straight, straight away, something interesting appeared in, in that studies come in very, very many different flavours, shapes and sizes. Some studies are indeed studies. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, or some are called études, which is the original French name for studies. Um, some exercises are actually studies. Uh, some studies are really just exercises. We'll talk about that in a minute as well. Some studies are really more unaccompanied pieces than studies. Um, and some studies are not called studies, but nonetheless are studies. And there are probably more um, un under this interesting collection of, of what are generally called studies. Let me just take you through one or two things here. Um, we can talk about the general idea of what a study is. Um, I think one of the interesting questions is, what is an exercise, what is a study? Um, on the whole, I would like to suggest that exercises are short. Um, maybe a few bars long, maybe a line long. Um, once they begin to be longer than that, um, then I think they become a study because I'd like to suggest that a study is a piece where you study something. Um, and so a good study would be a piece that has a particular theme about it. I don't mean a, a musical theme, but maybe a technical theme, um, something that is specifically technical, like tonguing, for example, or to explore staccato. Uh, or some musical aspect of, of playing. That, that I would think an extended piece that studies that in some detail, that we can call a study. Uh, an exercise, just a bar or two, is, is really an exercise, it's, it's not a study. Uh, on the top of my uh, little uh, pile here actually, are, are the Yettle books, a couple of the Yettle books, um, the accomplished clarinetist. And these are studies, but they're not called studies. And in fact, this one, book one, is the, is the first book that I remember John Davis, my teacher, getting me to get um, when I started at the academy. Uh, and we gradually work through these studies. And these are very interesting, and I just been, I remember them very well, I just been looking through them again. Uh, and while some of them are indeed studies in particular techniques, in a way these are studies that look particularly at rhythm. Um, obviously they are written by a great clarinetist, Rudolf Yettel. Uh, a friend of mine actually met Yettel once. Um, and they, they explore the clarinet extremely well, but they are really, I think, more rhythmical studies, which is something I didn't mention in my original introduction. Two books I have here of, of, Dem of, of Yettel, but there are more. Demnitz comes next. Now Demnitz we know as, as really more a tutor. And quite a lot of tutors have a good number of slightly extended pieces, which I think you can call studies. Uh, and I like very much, and you know, these are well known, the, the Demonitz studies. That's worth looking at. And, and over here, I have two more um, similar books that the Close Clarinet School. Uh, and he has clearly pieces that are studies, but he calls them exercises, 45 exercises on articulation. But, but they're, they're all quite lengthy. Um, most of them go between about four, six, this one's about eight lines long. They're quite quite long, so I think they could certainly be called studies. Uh, and if you want something that, that's in that particular style, sort of mid-19th century, um, preparing you for um, particularly spore, that kind of uh, music, the Closet studies are excellent. Um, and I also have here Henry Lazar Lazarus's method for clarinet, and, and he has um, also a collection of pieces which he says 12 exercises and studies so he uh, and they're not separate he just calls them exercises and studies so so he's a little bit unclear really but some of these are, are quite long a whole page and they very much um, explore very specific areas of playing like for example here's a whole first page the first one here uh, is is just working at fingering um, I think these are very good actually, um, and if you particularly, there's a, a lot of staccato ones here, um, the Lazarus collection is very interesting. 
Um, just have I got it here? Um, talking about more 20th century, I, I'm sure I did bring it out. Yes, um, the 20th century clarinetist by Alan Siegel. Uh, again, he doesn't use the word study, at least uh, certainly not in the title. Um, but this book is a collection of excellent studies. In fact, yes, he does actually. He, he, and on each section, he, he gives us an exercise, which is just a two line introduction and then an etude. Uh, the French word for study. So he gives us a particular idea here, big leaps, and then he gives us an etude based on those big leaps. Uh, and these are, are good pieces, uh, you know, in the in the flavour of the Chopin etudes, um, which are obviously, musically speaking, excellent pieces. Um, and I think if you are looking to develop a more um, contemporary, n not the most contemporary, but, but more contemporary techniques, um, these Alan Siegel studies um, are, are extremely good. So the, the Alan Siegel 20th century clarinetist is, is an excellent book to have in your library if that's your interest. Um, here, here's a book of studies called Capriccio, the, the, the Blatt collection of 12 Capriccio in the form of studies. That's his subtitle there. Uh, these are quite long um, and some of them are very extended, but if that's the particular kind of angle that you'd like, of course, and there's lots of other books. I won't go through them in detail. The Rosé book, I'm sure you know. Uh, the Robert Stark collection of staccato studies. Uh, the Alfred All studies, um, a, a very famous collection, um, which, which are, are musically of considerable interest. Um, and they're, they're not necessarily specifically written to develop particular technical areas, although I just opened it up here at number 17, which is a, a study in staccato and wide leaps. Um, this one here is just a tune really, although it has five flats, so I suppose that's really a study in playing in five flats. Um, but the all collection is very important. Uh, and I've also brought out the Frederick Thurston passage studies. Uh, there's a couple of volumes, three, three I think maybe. Um, and each of these is, is uh, based around particular sections of orchestral works um, that have particular technical uh, aspects on it and he develops those aspects. Uh, and if it happens to be a piece that you're playing and he does a study, I'd very much suggest you have a look at the, the Thurston study. I've also brought out the Wiedemann 32 clarinet studies, uh, another collection of interesting studies. So that, that's quite a collection there. The Fritz Kroepsch also you may know. Now these really are more like exercises, but he does call them studies. Um, 416 of them, in fact. Um, but some of them are very short. The first one is literally only a line long. And of course, it doesn't actually matter whether you call it an exercise or a study. Um, but these, of course, are very good. Uh, somewhere here, there's just one more collection I'd just like to, to, to mention. The, the Behrman collection of amusing exercises. I wonder whether you come across these. Uh, th this is actually uh, a copy of, of the original edition. Um, which I got from ISMLP. But there are a number of published editions of this. Uh, and uh, I, I love the fact that they're called Exercises Amusant, Amusing Exercises. Uh, they are neither amusing nor are they exercises. Um, and also he writes for amateurs. Well, um, there should be one coming up on, on, the, on the screen just now. Uh, and uh, it doesn't really look like an amusing exercise for an amateur. They're, they are very extended. Uh, they're very complicated, but, but fascinating. Um, and, and if you want to develop your sort of early romantic, um, virtuosic style of playing, uh, these are fun to play. So in this next little section, um, I thought we'd just look at one or two of those particular study collections uh, so I could show you them in a little bit more detail uh, in case you don't know them already. Um, so I thought I'd start with the with the Krupsch, in fact. Uh, there are a number of different editions of this. Um, this is the one I happen to have. And so that gives you a good idea. He does them in keys, which is very useful. Um, and so if you're playing a piece in C major and you want to explore C major, um, these are the, the go-to pieces really. Uh, and as I said earlier, some of them are very short, like number one, number two. Uh, they're just one line long. But they, they, they are studies um, because they do study particular ideas, fingering ideas or leaps as in number five, um, sort of arpeggiated kind of patterns as in number eight. Um, and 
it's a very useful collection uh, as you can see on the cover uh, there are in fact in this particular edition there are four editions I think the other editions are published in a similar way so that's the Krupsch uh, the Alfred Uhl collection um, has um, been a favorite for for a long time uh, and by the way if you play in a clarinet quartet it's just popped into my mind there is a wonderful divertimento for clarinet quartet three clarinets and bass clarinet which i love playing it's a it's a it's a very fine work uh, and there's another ooh work that i remember playing oh it's it's a, a trio for clarinet viola and piano uh, if you ever get asked to do the mozart do the ool as well i did it in a concert uh, a few years ago and it's a it's a fine work and here is indeed the uh, study I was talking about, staccato and leaps. Uh, and that really is a study in staccato and leaps um, and well, well worth working at. Uh, and all the, uh, there's, there's uh, I think, two volumes of the all studies uh, and uh, they're all very interesting and very useful to work at. Uh, next, I've taken one example from the Yettle book. Uh, as I say, I did these at the Academy. It was my first book of studies I did with John Davis. Uh, and as you can see from this one, number six in the first book, uh, it, it's very much a study on rhythm. It, it is written by a clarinetist. Yettle was a fine clarinetist, um, so it's, it's very appropriate for the instrument. But it's not so much a study in anything technical. There are some technical features here, obviously, but it doesn't really concentrate on those. Uh, you just have to be able to work those things out and play it within the study. Uh, so it's it has musical aspects and rhythmical aspects. And you look on the second page there, um, all sorts of triplets within triplets and all sorts of interesting things there. Uh, it's quite an interesting work to, to think through. So two books of Yetl studies, uh, that sort of level really, uh, and very useful if that's really what you need to be thinking about. Uh, next I've chosen one from the Frederick Thurston Passage Studies. Uh, here's one that is based around that famous passage in the last movement of Beethoven's Fourth Symphony. Uh, and he, he kind of extends it. I think the first line is indeed the uh, what comes in Beethoven, uh, and he extends the idea and there's another page, in fact, of this study. Uh, and fun to do, useful, uh, and if you're playing the Beethoven Fourth Symphony, uh, a good preparation for it. So, so maybe have a look and see what the pieces are. Uh, I'm sure you can find that online somewhere. Uh, and if they look appropriate, a good book of studies. And the, the final one uh, I've chosen, just to have a little look in a little bit more detail, is this fascinating Book, the 20th century, indeed the 21st century clarinetist, as you'll see from that. Although maybe the 20th century, because some of this kind of style of writing is very much 20th century, and uh, I think uh, contemporary composers don't necessarily write this kind of thing anymore. But if you're interested in this kind of writing, this kind of music, then the uh, the Alan Siegel book is uh, e extremely, extremely good. Uh, I can't remember how many studies there are on it. I think there's probably about 15 or 16 of them. Uh, and so, as I said earlier, they start with just an exercise. Uh, and then he explores, uh, in this particular case, leaps and uh, particular dynamics and all sorts of things. They're quite advanced, as you can see. But if you want to explore and investigate, experiment with this sort of technique, this sort of style, the Sigal studies are excellent. I just can notice rather a sad aspect here. This particular book used to belong to my friend Duncan Prescott um, and uh, he, he very sadly died at quite a young age. He was a very very good clarinet player uh, and uh, anyway so I've got one or two of his, his books. So that's just a look uh, in detail at one or two of these particular volumes we've been talking about. Uh, over the years I've written quite a few clarinet studies myself and uh, if you didn't mind I thought I'd just talk about one or two of the, the various collections. Uh, if you have my, my most recent book, the, the Clarinet, that big 250 page thing, um, there's quite a lot of studies in that that are very much related to specific areas of technique that, that, that uh, I talk about in the book. But I wanted to talk about two uh, collections that I've done. 
Uh, one is my 80 graded studies. Um, I've actually only got this, the, the Chinese edition here, um, but the, the English edition is obviously the same, uh, which I did with, with my great teacher, uh, John Davis. And uh, 80 graded studies, so, so they are graded um, kind of towards the, the, the parameters of, of sort of exams, but that, that's not important at all. Um, what, what is important is that they are um, very systematically progressive and that they they all really look at particular areas of technique um, and so I've just opened this one up um, and I've found number 20 which is one that I did uh, a, a huge assortment of different composers all those people we were looking at earlier are all included in these collections and more too uh, here's one that I've done number 20 um, that is very much uh, a study to uh, work at little fingers and little finger keys. I'll, I'll play a bit of it. And so on. So very specifically a little finger study and, and useful because uh, we can work at these studies um, and really look carefully uh, and think carefully about what exactly we're doing and here is some useful material. Um, looking further on, um, there's a lovely one here by Lefebvre. I did my best to choose really nice sounding studies. Um, Lefebvre, who we know from the, the wonderful clarinet sonatas, and this is a study in octaves. Uh, and it goes on and uh, lots more octaves to enjoy there. Uh, and here's another one, um, which is a study based around force, a very useful uh, interval. Uh, and it goes on for another four lines of all sorts of force. Uh, and so that's just a selection um, from the first collection of, uh, of 80 graded studies. Um, much more recently, uh, I've done uh, a follow-up, more graded studies for clarinet, uh, also uh, in two volumes. Uh, and uh, s since I did that one, actually, I very much developed my simultaneous learning um, approach to teaching. Uh, and so at the beginning of each of the studies here, uh, it, it gives you just some thoughts um, to, to make connections in your mind um, and look specifically at certain ingredients and really bring them out. So here, here's one by um, jazz composer A.J. Mears, Under the Rainbow. Um, and and the, in the little bubbles at the top, uh, accents, lifted notes, swung rhythm, syncopation, and then there's a one for, for you to fill in the key. Um, so you think carefully about what the key is and then maybe play the scale first. Uh, and so it goes on lots of lots of fun there um, <clears throat> this one um, by um, I can't remember whether she's Spanish or South American composer Nelia Velasquez um, but an excellent study um, in the bubbles, duration of notes, moving to and from F sharp, throat notes, dance character, and the key. Uh, and it's a great study because it's mostly all in the throat register uh, and lots of practice from F sharp to uh, A, um, which is you know, an, an important movement to really work on. Here's just a bit of it. and so on. Um, so a lot of practice in the throat register um, and all those throat fingerings. Uh, and uh, just one more from, from this book, um, or maybe I've got two. Um, Istvan Kleiper, um, Eastern Europe somewhere, um, may, maybe Hungarian. Um, and it's a, it's a lovely study in, in kind of dark tones, um, augmented seconds, even quavers, legato, uh, and, and all sorts of other things. And you can enjoy quality of sound here. Um, 
lots to enjoy in, in that particular study. Uh, and, and here's another one with a, with a, a flavor, another Nelia Velasquez. Um, again, dark tone color, resonant staccato, tango character. And so on. Um, so lo lots of fun to be had there. Uh, and then lots of uh, interesting studies in, uh, in book two. Um, so I'll give you a couple of little examples. Um, this is a quite favorite with my pupils, Zaz. It's called Z-A-double-Z. <laughs> So it goes on. So a lot of fun in that one. Uh, and here's here's an interesting one, um, a Furiant by Istvan Kleiper, um, which is it's got a lot of technical stuff in it, but also a lot of interesting rhythm. Um, so this last section, which is basically in ten eight, um, but has bars of eight eight seven eight and, and all sorts of other things. So it's a it's an interesting study, um, both in articulation, style, uh, and uh, all these changing time signatures. Here's a bit of it. So if you'd like to actually purchase any of these books and they're, they're, they're quite fun to have really in a sense because um, in, in all of them I've collected material from all the various composers that we've been looking at in this talk so you've got them all there in one place rather than having to uh, to buy all those books uh, you'll get a flavor from all these various different composers of studies through the various ages of the the clarinet's history so if you would like to to get a copy um, do go to the Faber music site the Faber music shop uh, and if you use this code you will get a very kind 20% discount so thank you very much indeed for being with me through this little talk uh, on the really rather interesting topic of clarinet studies.